what I proposed was this, that we, th those of us who are here, go ahead and read this, and discuss this poem, this amazing and uh, foundational poem, uh, but then not go on into Kabir and just uh, take, take it up again next week. Because is that good with you? It's fine with me. Okay. All right, well, Bart, why don't you go ahead and, and read the poem? And then we'll, uh, we'll discuss it among ourselves. Okay. Until your own dawn. Daybreak. Everything in this world is a luminous divine dream I have spun. I did not know life was a fabric woven by my soul. Any form that can appear to you, should I confess this? It is something I made. All roots nurse from me. God's art is mine. I did not want his divine talent. It simply grew in my heart from the way I loved. Existence is as a young child moving through a lane at night. It wanted to hold my hand. Here, dear earth, hold me until your own dawn. Until your own dawn. Daybreak. Everything in this world is a luminous divine dream I have spun. I did not know life was a fabric woven by my soul. Any form that can appear to you, should I confess this? It is something I made. All roots nurse from me. God's art is mine. I did not want his divine talent. It simply grew in my heart from the way I loved. Existence is as a young child moving through a lane at night. It wanted to hold my hand. Here, dear earth, hold me until your own dawn. Anybody got anything to say about that incredible poem? I say incredible with real emphasis on the word. It does uh, strain our credulity. That's, that should be the case. It, it made me think about the one earlier that we read, um, the smells of good food, about a child waiting. Uh, let me see, let me get back to this one. Yeah, um, waiting for her father to come home at night. Yeah. I love the, God's art is mine. I did not want his divine talent. It simply grew in my heart from the way I loved. Well, the, go ahead, please. Well, the, the only thing I'm puzzled a little about is here, the last part here, dear earth, hold me until your own dawn. Uh, I got a lot of lost there. I, I, I don't grasp the meaning of that either. Mm -hmm. um, she seems to be implying that um, that she's the only one who knows this 
And of course, she's the only one who knows exactly what she knows because each of us is unique. So maybe that's what she means. Um, when, when each of us has our own dawn, we'll have our own understanding of what she's speaking about, but it won't be exactly the same as hers. That's the only way I can seem to think about it. But what is true is that anyone who has studied the mystical traditions hears this refrain that I have become, I, I have come to share God's omnipotence, omniscience, and omnipresence. Mm -hmm. I mean, we hear Meister Eckhart say that he can kiss Jerusalem and yet be at the Rhine at the same time. The Rhine is where he actually lived. The Rhineland. So this, this poem definitely speaks to St. Catherine of Siena's sense of omnipotence, omnipresence, and omniscience. If we read Patanjali, we find that that is the last of the powers that manifests. And it's the last barrier between remaining in any way within time, space, and causation and Kaivalya, which is being independent of any condition or limitation. Or since others have joined us, Aaron and Swayam, why don't you read it one more time? See I if will. they have anything to say. Certainly. <clears throat> Until your own dawn, daybreak, Everything in this world is a luminous divine dream I have spun. I did not know life was a fabric woven by my soul. Any form that can appear to you, should I confess this? It is something I made. All roots nurse from me. God's art is mine. I did not want his divine talent. It simply grew in my heart from the way I loved. Existence is as a young child moving through a lane at night. It wanted to hold my hand. Here, dear earth, hold me until your own dawn. So Aaron, Swayam, anything that you want to say or or ask about this, add or ask. Um, I don't have anything at this point, Brother Shankara. I'm still trying to digest. Yes. Well, here's, here's what I thought. Since we got started late and uh, we're just going to, rather than move on into Kabir, since so many of our regulars aren't with us tonight, we'll just read this poem again next week. And uh, I mean, we can hang out together as much as we like this evening, but uh, I don't want to move on without um, those people who are part of the regular group. Um, so, I think, 
Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot to talk about in this if we'll relax and pause and <laughs> um, it is very Vedantic in a lot of ways. Um, everything in this world is a luminous divine dream I have spawned. I being not the little self I, but as she makes clear as she goes along, this oneness with the divine creative force. Mm -hmm. I did not know life was a fabric woven by my soul. Mm -hmm. But now she knows. Well, that's what she means by daybreak, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think um, this um, is also um, interesting and um, encouraging that God's art is mine. I did not want his divine talent. It simply grew in my heart from the way I loved. And this is um, in a way, you know, how we are always kind of reaching outside ra rather if like, wanting to be this, that, you know, like, I love music, but I have never learned. So I always want to become a great musician. <laughs> but uh, I think if I just enjoy it, uh, it will grow, I guess. It simply grew in my heart from the way I loved. I think uh, you've hit on a really key point, Swayam, in the poem. She did not desire this. This was not something, and again, this is something that's pointed out in Patanjali. If you want these things, they remain elusive. They simply spontaneously appear. And as she put it, she's a, she's a bhakta. She's a devotee. So it was from the way she loved From, for the for the yogi from Patanjali's perspective, it's the the seeker after transcendence, not not anything within the transcendence, just being just transcending the limitations as you shed the limitations, these powers of omniscience, omnipotence, and om omnipresence simply arise. And it's, you know, existence is as a young child moving through a lane at night. It wanted to hold my hand. Now, it may seem to us that existence is old. But if we think in terms of the scriptural, shastric definition of the day of Brahma, we're less than one-tenth of the way through this manifestation, this cycle of manifestation. So that's how I hear anyway, what she's saying in existence is a young child is still inexperienced, still not self-confident. It doesn't know yet what it is. <laughs> which is why it's still young and wanting to hold her hand and the dawn here dear earth hold me until your own dawn until until you know yes until your own daybreak yes. mm -hmm.
Mm. And I think you're we're very right, Swayam. It's uh, if 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 you're grasping, you know, it isn't going to come. It's going to come because you've directed your attention to something higher than grasping. And she speaks of love. The yogi speaks of transcendence, which is, Patanjali says, one way of doing that is through through devotion, through love. Anyone else got a mumbling word? Hi, uh, Hello, Aaron. Um, can like please get closer to the microphone you're breaking can, like, karmia could be a path to uh please please Aaron get closer to the microphone you're me. breaking up um, can can karmia be a path to I can't I can't understand what you're saying Aaron you're okay. breaking I guess up my computer I don't know if it gets my microphone very well I'm sorry I'm sorry, I think my internet connection is not good right now. Well, that was better. Maybe when you speak slower. So what was your comment or question? Okay, uh, so can, can Karmia be like a path to, to, to Bhakti Yoga? Okay? Can what be a path to? Uh, can, can karma yoga be a path to bhakti yoga? Oh, absolutely. If you begin to offer everything to the divine, as Krishna suggests, what happens is a relationship is established. And a relationship is a two-way thing. You start off by being the offerer and you begin to get a sense a real sense within yourself of that which you're offering to but then you get a real strong feeling as time goes on is that something is being offered back the prasad of what you, and that is what you're experiencing. So it definitely becomes a devotional relationship. I mean, that potential is there in the word relationship itself. So yes, karma is, this is what Swami Vivekananda says in his talks on karma yoga. Perfection is possible through karma yoga. And one of the ways is you lose your limited sense of self and, and become less limited. And as you become less limited, you love that which you are discovering that is not limited so much so that you're willing to sacrifice yourself for it. Thanks for that, Aaron. I'm glad you persisted till you were heard. Anything else from anyone? Um, I was sort of ruminating on um, how do we expand the scope of our love and I think it begins with uh, self-love not in a in a limited selfish sort of way but accepting fully accepting um, who you are or who I am with 
whatever I see as um, limitations. Until I'm able to do that, I think it is harder to expand the love outside. Oh, absolutely. One way of talking about this is becoming your own best friend. How do you treat your best friend? You treat them with love and generosity and understanding. You're supportive, sweet. You offer them things. They offer you things. There's a, again, it's this business of relationship. So yes, indeed, when you become your own best friend, then you can become real best friends with others. Very good, Swayam. I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up. I was, yeah. again, uh, relating that to, I'm just taking music as an example. I mean, I've started enjoying and loving um, music more and more. And I was, quote unquote, never good at music. In school, I used to be a good student in every other subject but I always failed in music um, but I've learned to appreciate and now we have a good group of friends and some of them are very good so I always I enjoy but I always have that uh, sense of lack or regret why did I not learn and I try but it takes me a lot of effort um, to get something even simple so now I have found a way to let go of that, that why can't I sing like so-and-so or play like so-and-so, but just let myself enjoy um, what I hear. I don't know if that makes sense. And that makes, it makes me... perfect sense. And, and you know, <laughs> If we just sing for the joy of it, just sing for the pure joy of it, it doesn't matter how well we do it. It's not a competition. <laughs> yes, there are uh, people who are expert musicians, and it's awesome to hear them play and sing. But one of the things that I've noticed about them is that they are very supportive and glad to hear you sing or play if you play something. I mean, sure, there are music snobs like there are every other kind. But what grows, as St. Catherine says, it simply grew in my heart from the way I love which was, as she gestures to in this, simple heartedly, not demandingly, not judgmentally. There is no love when there's judgment and demand. I think a lot of the judgment about music and people who are not professional or even amateur. That's a more recent thing in, in human history. I mean, back in the way back days, music, and it still is a part of some cultures, but it, it was a part of everyday life. Mm -hmm. And everybody was musical in some way, whether they, you know, played an instrument, sang or even got up and danced a little bit while other people, but it was just something that was part of everyday life. Mm -hmm. Human beings are musical. Mm -hmm. And this business of, you know, performer here up on a stage and audience down here, and there's a separation between the two. That's not very, it's real, but it's not real. 
I mean, where would those performers be without those people out there loving the music? We're, you know, performers are nothing without the lovers of music who may not themselves play. Yeah. And, you know, one of my musical heroes in, in, in other ways is my brother who he's a really good musician and an entertainer, but as he's gotten older, his, his favorite thing to do is music education and not teaching people who are already pretty good at it, but people who are just total beginners and may be in their sixties or seventies or whatever. And I mean, he's gone into homeless shelters and gotten people who are living in homeless shelters who aren't musicians to make music. And, and that's, that's his thing. It's just like everyone is musical in this judgment business or separation between professionals and everybody else's wrong. (laughs) But years ago, and I mean, it was decades ago now, there was a dog that lived in our house. James, he was a Basinji. And Basinjis traditionally in Africa lived with the Kalahari bush people. So one night there was one of those wonderful PBS specials. Um, I think it was two hours long, it was really something on the Kalahari bush people. So I really wanted to watch it and see the Basinjis with their their people. Well, one of the things that happened is in this, in the course of this documentary, speaking of just the way we love, the way someone is capable of loving, There was this old man who was the storyteller, the story keeper for his people. And the whole of the clan, whatever they you would call them, group that lived together were around the fire. And this old man began to tell his stories. And at some point, he broke into song. Now, he couldn't sing well at all anymore. His voice was creaky and cracked and so on. But it was still charming the way he did it. But what was really something was, after he had sung what we would call, I suppose, a verse, then he and the whole I mean, and I mean, everybody chimed in and sang it. And it was heart filling just to watch these people sitting around that fire in the night. Being together through this music. So I suspect that that's part of the way that part of what Catherine of Siena means when she says, it grew in my heart from the way I loved. Because you could feel the love and togetherness of those people. Um, can, you, can you hear me now, Brother Stalker? Yeah, talk slowly, Aaron. I think that helps. Okay. Yes, I, I agree. I, I feel there's something about music that it just feels like the center of the universe in some yeah. ways. It just brings people together. 
Yes. Beautiful. Thank you, Aaron. Yes. Existence is as a young child moving through a lane, late, a lane at night. It wanted to hold my hand. Now, I don't know, kids growing up anymore, they may not have that experience of walking down a lane. A lane is, of course, they hardly exist anymore except as walking paths. But uh, a lane, walking down a lane when it's really dark. There are no street lights. There are no nothing, just the stars. You definitely want to hold someone's hand. It wanted to hold my hand. Anybody else? Um, oh, think... Brother Shankar? Yes, dear. Can you expand a little bit more on that existence as a ch young child moving through a lane and it wanted to hold my hand and she's talking as Catherine of Siena? No, or... I think she's speaking as the divine person. Mm. I mean, you, you identified that earlier that she wasn't mm. speaking as the small self. I don't mm. think he's speaking as the small self anywhere. Mm. And when I, when, you know, this business that the mystics grasp about, and we hear it over and over among these 12, that This creation of the divines is not very old. It's still learning. And uh, but like I said about, uh, you know, if you look at the Shastrik, um, the, the scriptural definition of the of a cycle of um, creation. It's thirteen hundred and twenty to the tenth power. One thousand three hundred and twenty to the tenth power. which is this incalculably huge number. And according to the best guesses, you know, that's that number is in earth years, of course, the only measurement we have that's universally recognizable. It, you might say universally, I mean, recognizable among all human beings. According to the best guess of the astrophysicists, the Earth is about, I mean, not the Earth, the universe, this manifestation is about 13.2 billion years old. Now that seems like a long time to us, but in the terms of the Shastras, in terms of the scriptures, it's not very long at all. And it's interesting that Christ in the Gospel of Thomas speaks about existence being young and that human beings, the reason we behave so crazily is that we're drunk. We're drunk on existence itself.
That may not be in the Gospel of Thomas. I think that's in the Gospel of the Beloved Companion. Yeah, I think that's in the Gospel of the Beloved Companion. That is mind boggling that out of those, what are the 13 billion years, I mean, we are here in this space suit, so to speak, so little. And even in that, we spend uh, so much time in our sleep state. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's just, uh, just, I don't know, it's laughable, I guess. It, it, it is, it is in a way sweetly amusing. But as Cindy Sharda pointed out earlier, there's something very akin to what we think of as Eastern spirituality or Hinduism or Vedanta in the phrase, everything in this world is a luminous divine dream. I have spun, I being the divine person. I, her identification with the divine person is is total, and that's that's exactly what is said of a Brahman and Brahmins. This that Shakti or Maya or Prakriti is a divine dream. Vivekananda even says it in so many words: "We are infinite dreamers dreaming finite dreams." So I think he would just completely agree with what she says here. We don't have any of our sisters and brothers with us tonight who are still part of the Christian group. And I'm saying that's still not as if they'll change. We can speak as Vedantists here. Anything else? Even the the breaking of the first paragraph as daybreak mm -hmm. um, is our waking world, I guess, could be interpreted as the waking world is a divine dream. And then it ends in um, until your dawn. So that would be the, the fourth or the, the Turiya? Well, the perspective from which he's speaking could be seen as Turiya, but Turiya really is um, Nirvikalpa. This is more Savikalpa. But it, it certainly does cross the line. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, this, is, this is what Sri Ramakrishna said when he was pressed about samadhi. He said, oh, there are thousands of different kinds of samadhi. And by that, I'm sure he was pointing to the fact that each of us is an individual. So just exactly how we'll come to it. You know, I think the daybreak is is a pun. It is it is her own illumination, the dawn of knowledge within her. But then also that everything in this world is that luminous divine dream that comes when the sun rises and we can see everything. So Katrina, have you arrived safely home? Are you
apparently she's got herself muted. She was driving. She was leaving. When we began, she was leaving her sister's house. Yeah, I'm just getting here. Just getting in. <laughs> Very good. I'm glad. I'm glad you're safely home. Thank you. So anything else from anyone? All right, well, let's, let's call it an evening then. And for those of you who weren't here to hear it earlier, I don't even know if I said it earlier. Um, one of our congregation, as most of you know, is a retired surgeon by the name of Balakrishna Nuli. I asked Balakrishna to come by today to take a look at this incision and see if it was healing up properly. And what he said was, it could not be better. I mean, it's, it's just right on track, right on schedule, looks exactly as it should look, you know, from Friday afternoon to Monday afternoon. So I was very gratified about that because I can't tell. I, I, you know, I don't know what it should look like. They have their description in their papers, but you know, that, that assumes I understand what they mean. <laughs> but Balakrishna was absolutely unqualified in saying that this is healing up just fine so that's wonderful to hear brother shankara yeah as they say in those wonderful pentecostal churches thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. There's nothing the least bit ironic about that. <laughs> I'm so glad that it's having the effect that it's having and uh, that it's healing up properly. It's showing no signs of rejecting the device or it's just all just doing just fine. So any final thoughts from anyone? Anything to add or ask? This is just a random tangential uh, request. Uh, at some point when we finish one of the books, um, could we take up, I don't know if there's even an, uh, one single book, but Sister Nivedita's writings on mm. Yes, there's the, there's the, my master as I knew him. That is, that is her foundational book, if you will. Um, we'll put that in queue, uh, Swayam. Uh, I don't think, to be honest, I don't think we would find that many people who would be interested. So we may want to have a private class about that. And we can easily have a private class, um, either face to face or on Zoom. But, uh, I can honestly say, I mean, we don't have that many people come for Tuesday night's mother class. It's the, it's the least well attended of all of our classes. It often has fewer people than, than our Monday night group. So if you okay. want to study Nevedita together, I would be delighted to do it. Okay, Brother Shankara, that sounds good. And that book, my master, as I knew him, is a powerful book. It'll give you more understanding of Vivekananda than anything except perhaps his own letters. I mean, understanding of him as a, as a man. Thank you, Swayam. Anything else from anyone?
Okay. Well. Uma sato ma sat kamaya. Tamaso ma jyotir kamaya. Mrityor ma amritang kamaya. Abir, abir, oiti. Oh, dearly beloved Lord, lead us from this place where it is constantly noisy and distracting to your stillness and silence. Lead us from darkness and ignorance to the brilliance of thy wisdom and love. Lead us from death to immortality. Light us through and through. Light us through and through with thy everlasting shining presence. O oh Lord, lead us from this place of constant noise and unending change to thy abode of stillness oh, Mario, that's it. jai shri guru maharaj ji ki jai durga 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 may you be safe May you be healthy. May you be cheerful. May you have peace of mind. May you go forward in mother's loving and protective embrace. Any final thought from anybody? Okay. Well, good night all. Good night, Pradeshaka. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.